Hey there, fellow adventurers. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we are in Ghent, a city that's bursting with history, art, and culture. Join us as we uncover the hidden gems and must-see attractions in this stunning city. Ghent is a historic city located in the Flemish region of Belgium. It is situated in the northwestern part of the country, approximately 50 kilometers northwest of Brussels. Ghent is the capital and largest city of the East Flanders province. The history of the city dates back to ancient times, with its origins traced back to the Roman period when it was a small settlement. Over the centuries, Ghent grew in importance due to its strategic location, which made it an important trading and commercial center in medieval Europe. During the Middle Ages, Ghent experienced significant prosperity through its textile industry, becoming one of the wealthiest cities in Europe. However, the city's growth and prosperity also led to conflicts between the ruling nobles and the common people. During the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, Ghent continued to flourish, becoming an industrial center known for its textile and cotton industries. However, like many European cities, it faced challenges during the two world wars. In terms of size, Ghent covers an area of approximately 156 square kilometers, making it one of the larger cities in Belgium. The city's urban area is a mix of historic architecture, modern developments, and green spaces, providing a charming and dynamic environment. Around 260,000 people live in Ghent. We start our tour of Ghent near the St. Michael's Church. The church is dedicated to the Archangel Michael, who is considered a protector and defender in various religious traditions. St. Michael's Bridge, next to the church, is an iconic bridge that spans the River Lei, offering stunning views of the picturesque cityscape and the historic buildings along the riverbanks. From the bridge, visitors can enjoy breathtaking vistas of the medieval guildhouses that line the Gra Lei and Corin Lei Keys, as well as the majestic towers of St. Nicholas Church and the Belfry of Ghent. We stopped there for a while, admiring the views, and we immediately fell in love with Ghent. We then strolled across the bridge, took dozens of photographs, and absorbed the historical charm of the surroundings. It's a fantastic spot to admire the city's architectural beauty, especially during sunrise or sunset when the soft light adds to the enchantment. The river that flows below St. Michael's Bridge is called the River Lei. It is a meandering river that stretches across approximately 202 kilometers, originating near the city of Lisbourg in France and flowing through the Belgian regions of West Flanders and East Flanders. The section of the River Lei that passes through the heart of Ghent is flanked by two iconic quays known as Gra Lei and Corin Lei. These historic streets on either side of the river are lined with beautifully preserved medieval guildhouses, reflecting the city's rich trading history. Today, the two quays are vibrant areas bustling with restaurants, cafes, and shops. Leaving the bridge, we walked in the direction of St. Nicholas Church. It is a magnificent Gothic-style church located in the historic city center, and is one of the most prominent and impressive religious buildings in the city. St. Nicholas Church has a long and storied history dating back to the early 13th century. Construction of the church began around 1200 AD, and it was completed in several stages over the subsequent centuries. The church was consecrated in honor of St. Nicholas, the patron saint of merchants and sailors, which was fitting given Ghent's history as a prosperous trading city. Today, St. Nicholas Church continues to be an active place of worship and is also open to visitors who want to explore its historical and architectural beauty. The architecture of St. Nicholas Church is a stunning example of Gothic style, characterized by its pointed arches, ribbed vaults, and tall, elegant windows. 
The church features two majestic towers that dominate the skyline of Ghent. The northern tower, known as the Belfry, is the taller of the two, reaching a height of approximately 70 meters. The area next to the church is part of the city's historic center and is characterized by a charming blend of medieval architecture, lively squares, and a vibrant atmosphere. It is more commonly known as the Paterschall District, and it is a popular destination due to its unique character and diverse offerings. The Paterschall District is renowned for its gastronomic delights, making it a paradise for food enthusiasts. There, you will find a wide array of restaurants and eateries offering diverse cuisines, from traditional Belgian dishes to international flavors. But for now, let us take a short tour inside the St. Nicholas Church. The interior of the church is breathtaking. It features a nave with soaring vaulted ceilings and an array of impressive stained glass windows that filter colorful light into the space. The altars, sculptures, and ornate decorations reflect the religious and artistic significance of the church during the Gothic period. Once inside, we were captivated by the grandeur and beauty of the space, adorned with intricately carved details, stained glass windows, and religious artifacts. The elegant simplicity of the architecture allows for a sense of awe and magnificence as you look up at the soaring heights. The interior is also filled with stunning stained glass windows that fill the church with vibrant hues of light. The windows depict various religious scenes and figures, adding a sense of spirituality and storytelling to the space. The interplay of colorful light filtering through the windows creates a mesmerizing atmosphere within the church. One of the most notable features of St. Nicholas Church is its association with the famous Ghent altarpiece, also known as the Adoration of the Mystic Lamb. This monumental polyptic altarpiece, painted by the brothers Jan and Hubert van Eyck in the 15th century, is considered one of the masterpieces of Western art. Originally housed in the church, it is now displayed in the nearby St. Bavo's Cathedral for preservation. We left the church and walked in the direction of the Belfry of Ghent. The church's design emphasizes verticality, creating a sense of height and grandeur that is accentuated when seen from a vantage point like the Belfry. The Belfry of Ghent is a medieval bell tower located adjacent to St. Nicholas Church. It offers a panoramic view of Ghent and its surrounding areas, including a stunning perspective of St. Nicholas Church. Climbing the belfry's narrow and winding staircase to the top provides visitors with a unique opportunity to admire the church's architectural beauty from above. The square located between the belfry of Ghent and the church of St. Nicholas is called the Golden Lion Square in English. The square is surrounded by beautiful historical buildings, many of which were once guildhouses and are now home to restaurants, cafes, and shops. The area exudes a welcoming and vibrant atmosphere. We are now inside St. Bavo's Cathedral, located just next to the Belfry Tower. It is another magnificent Gothic cathedral, with a rich history that dates back to the 10th century. The construction of the cathedral began in the 12th century, and it underwent several expansions and renovations over the centuries, reflecting different architectural styles. St. Bavo's Cathedral has reopened its doors after years of renovation, welcoming visitors for a truly incredible experience, taken to a whole new level using modern technology and showcasing the authentic art treasures held within the cathedral in all their glory. The experience begins with an augmented reality tour in the crypt where visitors can see the many interesting facts and details about the mystic lamb and the life of Jan van Eyck projected right before their eyes, and culminates in the opportunity to admire the restored mystic lamb in its new bright setting. 
The Ghent altarpiece, also called the The Adoration of the Mystic Lamb by the Van Eyck brothers was completed in 1432 and is recognized worldwide as a great work of art and one of the most influential paintings ever made. Its 18 panels depict scenes from the Bible. The cathedral is dedicated to Saint Bavo, also known as Saint Bath, who was a 7th century nobleman and later a Christian saint. The cathedral was originally built as a parish church but was elevated to cathedral status in the 16th century. Our visit of St. Bavo's Cathedral lasted almost two hours. Another significant artwork inside the cathedral is the conversion of St. Bavo, an impressive Baroque altarpiece painted by Peter Paul Rubens. This altarpiece honors St. Bavo, the cathedral's patron saint, and it is located in the chapel of St. Bavo. Next stop on our agenda was the Gravenstein, which is located 10 minutes away on foot. On our way we had the chance to admire once more the Gothic architecture of St. Bavo's church, as well as, the various cafes and restaurants, in front of the church, making it a perfect spot for a quick coffee break before continuing. This video is almost 30 minutes long, and we do have a lot more to show you. Now is probably a good time to ask you to subscribe to our channel, if you have not done so already. And please do leave us some comments and tell us about your feelings after watching our video. Remember, to also click the notification bell so that you do not miss out our next video release. Ghent has been recognized for its sustainable practices and green initiatives. The city has implemented various environmental measures, such as car-free zones, green spaces, and waste reduction campaigns. It is known for its bicycle-friendly infrastructure, making it easy for visitors and locals to explore the city on two wheels. Cycling is a popular mode of transport and a fantastic way to experience the city's sights and neighborhoods. The Stadtschau, also known as the City Pavilion, is a contemporary addition to the city's historic center. It was completed in 2012 as part of the Ghent 2012 celebration, which marked the city's designation as the European Capital of Culture. The pavilion's design is characterized by its innovative and open concept, serving as a versatile public space. The Stadtschau is situated in Emile Braunplein, a square adjacent to the city hall. Did you know that the city pavilion has received mixed reviews from the public since its construction? Some locals appreciate its modernity and the added public space it provides, while others have expressed concerns about its visual impact on the historic surroundings. Construction of the Ghent City Hall began in the early 16th century, and it is a masterpiece of Brabantine late Gothic architecture. Its facade is adorned with elaborate sculptures, decorative motifs, and intricate detailing, showcasing the skill and craftsmanship of the artisans of that era. The building is constructed from sandstone and features a stepped gable roof, characteristic of Flemish Gothic architecture. The facade is divided into three levels, each with a row of large windows framed by richly decorated arches. Numerous statues representing historical and allegorical figures adorn the niches and pilasters of the building, adding to its grandeur. Ghent Graffiti Street is a unique and vibrant alleyway that has earned its nickname due to its colorful and ever-changing graffiti-covered walls. The walls of the Graffiti Street serve as a public canvas for graffiti artists, muralists, and street art enthusiasts. The alley is open for anyone to create and contribute to the ever-evolving art gallery. As a result, the graffiti and murals on display change regularly, offering a dynamic and fresh experience with each visit. The artworks cover a wide range of styles, themes, and messages, expressing the creativity and diversity of the artists who contribute to the space. 
You can find everything from intricate spray-painted murals to colorful tags and thought-provoking stencil art. What sets Ghent Graffiti Street apart from other unauthorized graffiti locations is that it is officially designated as a legal graffiti zone by the city. This means that artists are allowed and encouraged to create art here without fear of legal repercussions, as long as they follow certain guidelines set by the city. Hof van Rijthove is a historic mansion, dating back to the late 16th century when it was originally built as a private residence for a wealthy merchant family. It is truly an oasis in the middle of the city. You can rest in the garden and enjoy the beautiful flowers that adorn the surroundings. The mansion's architectural style is a mix of Renaissance and Baroque elements. It features a beautifully preserved façade with decorative carvings, elegant windows, and ornate doorways. While the interior of the mansion is not open to the general public, the building houses the Ghent City Museum's headquarters. Inside, visitors can find exhibitions and displays related to the city's history and cultural heritage. Hoopport is one of the major shopping streets, in Ghent, renowned for its mix of old-world charm and modern retail offerings. It was an essential commercial street during the Middle Ages, known for its bustling trade and thriving markets. Today, remnants of its historic past can still be seen in the architecture of some buildings along the street. The Butcher's Hall Bridge is one of the many picturesque bridges that span the city's waterways. It is an elegant stone bridge with a single arch, typical of many historic bridges in Ghent. The bridge's architecture reflects the city's medieval heritage and adds to its timeless appeal. From the bridge, visitors can admire the views of the River Scheldt and the historic buildings that line the waterfront. The bridge is part of Ghent's pedestrian-friendly city centre, making it an ideal starting point for exploring the city on foot. We are now approaching Ghent Gravenstein, also known as the Castle of the Counts. This is a medieval fortress, and it is definitely one of the city's most iconic landmarks and a must-visit destination. We will come back again to this area later in our video, but for now let me give you some information about this fortress. The Castle of the Counts was constructed in the late 12th century by Philip of Alsace, the Count of Flanders. The fortress served as the residence of the Counts of Flanders and was strategically built to display their power and authority. Over the centuries, the castle underwent various renovations and uses, including serving as a courthouse, a prison, and even a cotton factory. The architecture is a fine example of medieval military construction. The castle's imposing appearance with its high walls, turrets, and moat evokes a sense of medieval grandeur. The central keep, surrounded by defensive walls and battlements, was designed to provide protection and control over the surrounding area. One of the unique attractions within Gravenstein is the Torture Museum. The museum displays a collection of historical torture devices used during the Middle Ages, providing insight into the harsh and brutal methods of punishment and interrogation that were employed during that era. We left the fortress and walked towards what is called the distillery. It is a popular cultural center. The venue is housed in a former distillery, which gives it its unique name. It has been transformed into a vibrant cultural space that hosts a wide range of events, performances, and activities. The center hosts concerts, theater performances, dance shows, art exhibitions, workshops, lectures, and much more. We are now in Praetorschall. It is one of the oldest and most picturesque neighborhoods in the city, known for its narrow cobblestone streets, medieval architecture, and cozy atmosphere. The neighborhood is characterized by its quaint houses with stepped gables, charming facades, and ornate detailing. 
As you walk through the narrow streets, you'll be transported back in time, surrounded by the ambience of centuries-old buildings. Pratishal is not only a historical gem but also a culinary delight. The neighborhood is home to a variety of restaurants, cafes, and eateries, offering both traditional Belgian cuisine and international dishes. The establishments often have outdoor seating, creating a cozy and inviting atmosphere where you can enjoy a leisurely meal or a refreshing drink. In addition to its dining scene, Pretichol is known for its boutique shops and specialty stores. Here, you can find unique souvenirs, handmade crafts, and other treasures, making it a great place to shop for gifts and mementos. Zuevelbrag is a small pedestrian bridge, situated over one of the many canals in Ghent. It is an arched bridge, adorned with beautiful railings, and surrounded by the historic buildings. The bridge's relatively low height and pedestrian-only access create a peaceful and relaxing atmosphere, making it a popular spot for strolling and taking in the scenic views. We are now approaching the Friday Market. It is one of the main squares in Ghent and has been a central gathering place for centuries. The square's name originates from the traditional weekly market that used to take place here on Fridays. The square's history dates back to medieval times when it served as a trading center and meeting place for merchants. Over the centuries, it has been the site of various events and gatherings. The square is surrounded by a mix of historic buildings, many of which date back to the medieval and renaissance periods. One notable building on the square is the historic Vlishuis, also known as the Butcher's Hall, which adds to the square's charm and historical significance. The centerpiece of the plaza is the statue of Jacob van Artevelde, Ghent's wise man who sided with England during the Hundred Years' War and was murdered on the site in 1345. The statue honors his legacy and contributions to the city. The bronze statue stands atop a pedestal in the center of the square, and it serves as a reminder of Ghent's medieval history and its prominent figures. He is remembered as a man who tried to mediate between the Flemish cities and the English crown, seeking to establish commercial and diplomatic ties for mutual benefit. His efforts earned him the title of wise man and made him a beloved figure among the citizens of Ghent. The square is surrounded by a variety of restaurants, cafes, and bars, making it an ideal place to stop for a meal, snack, or refreshing drink. The outdoor terraces of the establishments create a convivial setting, allowing visitors to relax and watch the world go by. The Friday Market is a dynamic and historically significant square in Ghent, offering a delightful blend of history, culture, and modern-day city life. Whether you visit during a special event or on a regular day, the square's vibrant ambience and picturesque surroundings make it a must-visit destination. Another historic landmark in Ghent is the St. James Church, as it is one of the city's most significant religious and architectural sites. The origins of St. James Church can be traced back to the 12th century when a Romanesque church stood on the site. The current Gothic-style church was built during the 14th and 15th centuries. The exterior of the church features impressive details, including ornate spires, intricate carvings, and large stained-glass windows that fill the interior with colorful light. From the church, we walked back towards Ghent City Hall. So far, throughout this video, we have established that Ghent is famous for its medieval architecture, for its street arts, for its amazing churches and for its cycling culture. We also learnt about two picturesque quays located along the River Lei, that are lined with beautifully restored medieval buildings. And that perhaps the adoration of the mystic lamb is one of the most important and influential paintings in art history. Ghent is famous for its lively and diverse cultural events and festivals. 
The Ghent Festival, known as Gents Fies 10, is one of the largest street festivals in Europe, attracting millions of visitors with music, theater, street performances, and more. Ghent is also home to one of the largest student populations in Belgium. The city's universities and colleges create a vibrant and youthful atmosphere, contributing to its lively nightlife, thriving cultural scene, and dynamic arts community. The city is also known for its delicious Belgian cuisine, including specialties like Flemish stew, water zooey, and Belgian waffles. Additionally, Ghent has a rich tradition of brewing, and craft beer is a big part of Ghent's culinary scene. And finally, the Belfry of Ghent is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and an iconic symbol of the city. Visitors can climb the tower for panoramic views of Ghent's skyline. Earlier in the video, we told you that we will revisit the area around the Gravenstein Castle. The plan was to buy a ticket and explore the Torture Museum. We wanted to climb to the top of the castle's towers and enjoy the breathtaking panoramic views of Ghent's cityscape, especially around sunset. However, to our utter disappointment, we learnt at the ticketing office that they were sold out for the day. So lesson learnt. If you plan to visit Gravenstein, be sure to check the opening hours and ticket availability. Guided tours are available, and they provide valuable insights into the castle's history and significance. There are also guided boat trips in medieval Ghent. The boat tour down the river Lei generally lasts 40 minutes and are offered in various languages. The castle square is a large open area located directly behind the castle. It features an expanse of green space, where visitors can sit, stroll, or have a leisurely picnic. The castle's walls form a striking backdrop, giving the square a unique ambience. The open space of the castle square offers excellent views of the castle from various angles. This small open space provides a welcoming and free area for the public to enjoy the picturesque surroundings. With its green space, views of the castle, and opportunities for relaxation and recreation, this charming spot is a perfect corner for Instagram photos. We stayed there for almost half an hour, awestruck by quite probably the most breathtaking sight of Ghent. It was getting late and we still had to drive to our hotel which was located at Zeebrug Beach. Therefore, we decided to head back to our car. Grassbrug Bridge is a narrow short bridge over the River Lei. From this bridge you can take amazing photos of the old city with the boats. In contrast to the heavily touristy St. Michael Bridge nearby, this is a better option to cross the River Lei, with equally amazing views but with fewer people. We were walking along Coronlay, which along with its neighboring key Gra Lei, is considered one of the most beautiful spots in Ghent. From the quay, visitors can admire the reflection of the medieval buildings in the calm waters of the River Lei. The view is especially captivating in the evening when the lights illuminate the buildings and create a magical atmosphere. Throughout the year, Coronlay hosts various events and festivals, adding to the vibrant atmosphere of the area. These events range from cultural festivals and markets to live music performances and outdoor gatherings. As the sun sets, Ghent transforms into a magical wonderland. The city comes alive with its vibrant nightlife, offering plenty of bars, pubs, and entertainment options. And that wraps up our adventure in Ghent, Belgium. This city has truly stolen our hearts with its rich history, vibrant culture, and warm hospitality. We hope this video inspires you to visit Ghent and create your own unforgettable memories. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more exciting travel videos from around the world.
Next Friday we will bring you on another fantastic trip in Bruges. Until next time, happy travels, 